So it's now what, March? March 4th. I have been in Regina since February 10th. Uh, my job search not going great. Um, out of everything I had in the bank. Uh, trying to save the sell things right now, right? Things that are basically brand new and worth a lot of money. And I'm selling them for a very fair price. And as per usual from selling something online, you get, hey, will you take like a third of the price you're offering it for, which is already more than half price off of things that sometimes are still new in the box. And I'm like, fuck no. Like I'm a, I'm desperate to not go back to where I was when I was with my ex-wife, but I'm not desperate enough to lose everything because I'm not, I'm just not. I'm not, uh, I'm not here to give you something that's worth like $600 for a hundred when I'm selling it for like 250. <laughs> like it's just, it's, it is the way it is. Um, and you know, a lot of times it's never been used. It's, you know, some of the stuff has just been taken out of the box and I never needed it. Or some stuff is still sealed because I never used it. Like uh, my, sorry, I'm doing the laundry right now. I'm, here's the thing, right? I am so, going so squirrely that I am trying to find as many chores to do to try and keep my mind off of things. But, um, where was I going with that? Yeah, so, you know, like, like my video game capture card. Now, I know that's a niche item. It's a niche item. But I bought it for $288 plus tax when I bought it. I bought this a while ago. And I always meant to start video game streaming again. And I just never did. And I never did because I worked a job that would have me busy for... 12 to 16 hours a day. So I never really had time to go and do what I wanted to do with that. And I just never opened it because I never did what I wanted to do with it. And it was an Amazon purchase and all that fun stuff, right? So I have it up at like 120 bucks, right? My video capture box is up for 120 bucks. So you're saving already $170 before tax. And I'm, I'm getting people all the time. Hey, will you accept 50? Will you? No. Again, I am desperate to pay my bills. But as of right now, I'm not desperate enough to give you this for free. Because the idea of bartering has always been there. But the thing I've noticed about online bartering is, you know, I'd say online bartering is great. If, if you have something that's worth $288 and somebody has it up for like two forty, dollars okay, well, you accept two. When somebody has it up already for uh and the reason I price things so low is I don't care to deal with the fucking haggling. I don't. I just want to sell the item and be done with it. So it's like, here's my price. Do you like my price or do you not? If you don't like my price, you're free to not buy the item. If you like my price, the item's available. And a lot of times, after I have that conversation with somebody, they're like, yeah, we're not interested. And I'm like, okay, again, that's perfectly fine. This is the wire for the 220 that's just hanging. I gotta post it up. I gotta get some, uh, <laughs> I gotta get to fucking work so I can get a paycheck and try and catch up. So within the next month or two, I can buy some of the things I need. Like that's, those are like, the wire clamps are like, what, 35 cents a piece? I don't even have that right now. And I know, well, you have all this beer and everything else. Yeah, I bought all that when things were looking like they were going to go good before all hell fucking broke loose in my life and every single cent I had left. Um, to the point where I'm currently about $10,000 in debt, which I know isn't a lot, but when you don't have an income coming in and your income that's going to come in still doesn't cover everything. 
Plus, I have some contractor jobs that I have to get done. that are outside my means. Uh, I'm okay at this stuff. I'm not great. And this is stuff that's past my skill level. So I have to pay somebody for it. That's almost $5,000. So we're going to hit like 15000 that I'm... owing out and again it should have all worked until things happened and I owe the lawyer because I found out that you know after everything was said and done even though we're with Fro the lawyer didn't do the paperwork for Fro so Fro is still demanding the old amount of child support even though I have my minutes in set of settlement and all that they've never been endorsed by a judge so you know Fro doesn't use those they still use what was endorsed by a judge and I had an argument with my lawyer, and I'm like, but you went in front of a judge with these minutes of settlement. Why didn't they get endorsed? She's like, well, because you don't need them endorsed. I go, but you know I'm with Fro, and Fro needs them endorsed, so you not getting them endorsed means that you've done nothing. She goes, no, no, we've done stuff. You have to follow those. Those are binding contracts. I go, That's great. I'm following it. But what I'm saying is... Fro, don't give a shit that that's what you gave me. Fro is like, what the fuck? You haven't done your job. You're not paying what you're supposed to be paying. And I'm like, what are, what are you talking about? Here it is. I, I am. Oh, well, that's not endorsed, so that means nothing. But this is what my lawyer did, knowing that we were with you. <laughs> so it just, it boggles my mind. And that's, that's another, like, $600 expense now. Like, I... Fucking dying. I should have just... I should have just stayed in the place that was making me suicidal again, because... And here's the thing, right? I'm freaking out right now. I really am. I'm legitimately freaking out and going fucking squirrely because I have no job and I can't find a part-time job and I can't can't find a better full-time... Uh, so I'm having this squirreliness going on in my head. But I'm still in such a better place than I was when I was in the Arctic. And I think that's the scariest part of it all. Anyway, guys. Um, doing the laundry. Picking up dog poop caulked the bathroom because they, they have a tub surround but they never caulked around the top or the sides of the tub surround so we caulked that um there was a crack in my wall from shifting because there's plaster and lath in that room so we we for now just caulked over that with a clear caulking to keep any moisture from going in there until i have a chance to actually do the proper work and as soon as it gets warm i have some work to do outside um i have to extend my downspouts i have to seal some cracks and crevices and i mean it's all stuff that's easily doable it's just at negative 25 you can't really do it so I'm, i should have did it a few weeks ago when it was like plus four but i didn't realize it was going to have a like winter vortex come through and i still have to get up in here and look at the toilet because the toilet's on quite an angle now i was told the house is only on like a two degree angle um and every house in regina ends up shifting but most people don't like most even engineers won't come look at your house until you're on over a 10 degree angle. Well, that toilet is on pretty close to a 10 degree angle and the toilet is right there. So I'm going to have to get in there and look at what's going on because I'm not a hundred percent sure what is going on. But, um, this is very, very, very tight and I'm a very large man. I just don't know if the floorboards are giving way. It looks like that might be the problem because, oh, the floorboards are all the diagonal, the original diagonal floorboards. And the floor joist looks fine, unless they cut through the joist there too. But uh, we'll find out shortly, won't we? Yeah, we will. Oh, I could probably pop up that vent, that ceiling tile in the bathroom to look better. It looks like there's a little bit of water damage on that piece of the wall. So this pipe may have leaked at some point. Okay, well, we'll try and see this, eh? Yeah. I'm a little worried now. 